Who's that I see walking in these woods? Why, it's Little Red Riding Hood. Hey there, Little Red Riding Hood. Her name was Connie. She was 15 years old in July 1966. She had a habit of craning her neck to glance into mirrors or checking other people's faces to make sure her own was all right. Her mother, who noticed everything and knew everything and who hadn't much reason any longer to look at her own face, always scolded Connie about it. Stop gawking at yourself. Who are you? You think you're so pretty, she would say. Connie would raise her eyebrows at these familiar old complaints and look right through her mother into a shadowy vision of herself as she was right at that moment. She knew she was pretty, and that was everything. There was one good thing. Her sister June went places with girlfriends of hers, girls who were just as plain and steady as she, and so when Connie wanted to do that, her mother had no objections. The father of Connie's best girlfriend drove the girls the three miles to town and left them at a shopping plaza so they could walk through the stores or go to a movie. And when he came to pick them up again at 11, he never bothered to ask what they had done. So what movie are we gonna see? Uh, let me think. <laughs> sometimes they did go shopping or to a movie, but sometimes they went around the corner to a drive-in restaurant where older kids hung out. They would sit at the counter and listen to the music that made everything so good. The music was always in the background, like music at a church service. It was something to depend on. Hey, Connie. Hey, Manny. How are you? Good. What are y'all up to? Hanging out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just sitting in the corner, not ordering anything or not talking to anybody. <laughs> Have y'all eaten? Yeah, I've already eaten. Connie, you want a hamburger, something to eat? All right. spent three hours with him at the restaurant where they ate hamburgers and drank Cokes and then down an alley a mile or so away. One Sunday, Connie's family left early for their aunt's barbecue. They didn't bother to wake Connie. Connie sat with her eyes closed in the sun, dreaming and dazed with a warmth about her as if this were a kind of love, and her mind slipped over onto thoughts of the boy she had been with the night before and how nice he had been, how sweet it always was, gentle, the way it was in movies and promised in songs. When she opened her eyes, she hardly knew where she was. The backyard ran off into weeds and a fence-like line of trees, and behind it the sky was perfectly blue and still. It 
was too hot. She went inside and turned on the radio to drown out the quiet. I ain't late, am I? Who the hell do you think you are? Told you I'd be out, didn't I? I don't even know who you are. You wanna come for a ride? Don't you like my car? The new pay job. Hey. What? You're cute. <laughs> don't you believe me or what? Look, I don't even know who you are. Hey, Ellie's got a radio, see? Mine broke down. Bobby King? I listen to him all the time. I think he's great. <laughs> he's kind of great. Oh, listen, that guy's great. He knows where the action is. There's all that stuff painted on your car. Can't you read it? She has my name to begin with. I want to introduce myself. I'm Arnold Fran, and that's my real name. And I'm going to be your friend, honey. And inside the car is Ellie Oscar. He's kind of shy. Oh, uh, now, these numbers are secret code 33-19-17. What do you think of that now? Not much. How about this? Around <laughs> <laughs> the other side is a lot more. You want to come and see them? No. Why not? Why should I? Don't you want to see what's on the car? Don't you want to go for a ride? I don't know. Why not? Mm, I got things to do. Like what? Things. <laughs> oh, Connie, you ain't telling the truth. This is your day set aside for a ride with me, and you know. How do you know what my name is? It's Connie. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> I know my Connie. Ellie and I come out here especially for you. Ellie can sit in the back. How about it? Where? Where what? Where are we going? Just for a ride, Connie, sweetheart. Never said my name was Connie. But I know what it is. I know your name and all about you. Lots of things. <laughs> I took a special interest in you. Such a pretty girl. Found out all about you. 
I can know your parents and your sister are gone somewhere, and I know where and how long they're gonna be gone. And I know who you were with last night. And your best girlfriend's name is Betty, right? Ellie can sit in the back seat. How'd you find out all that stuff? Oh, listen, Betty Schultz and Tony Fitch and Jimmy Pettinger and Nancy Pettinger, Raymond Stanley and Bob Hunter. Do you know all those kids? I know everybody. <laughs> Look, you're a kid and you're not from around here. Sure. How come we never saw you before? Sure you saw me before. You, you just don't remember. I guess I'd remember you. Yeah. <laughs> what are you thinking about, huh? You're not worried about your hair blowing around in the car, are you? No. Think I maybe can't drive good. Well, how do I know? <laughs> Oof. You're a hard girl to handle. How come? Don't you know I'm your friend? Didn't you see me put my sign in the air when you walked by? What sign? My sign. Hey, how old are you? <laughs> That's a crazy thing to ask. Can't you see I'm your own age? Like hell you are. Maybe a couple years older. I'm 18. 18. Him, he's crazy. <laughs> Ain't he right? <laughs> He's a nut. A real character. It's kind of strange. <laughs> hey, she says you're kind of strange. Kind of strange. Maybe you two better go away. What? How come? We, we come out here to take you for a ride. It's Sunday. Don't you know it's Sunday all day? And honey, no matter who you were with last night, today you're with Arnold Friend. Don't you forget it. Maybe you... Maybe you better step out here. No, I, I, I got things to do. Hey. You two better leave. We ain't leaving until you come with us. Like hell I am. Honey, don't fool around with me. I mean, I mean, don't fool around. <laughs> My father comes and, and sees you. He ain't coming. He's at a barbecue. How do you know that? Aunt Tilly's. Right now they're, uh, they're drinking, sitting around. Sitting around. There's your sister in a brown dress, huh? And high heels? Of course, that bitch. Oh, she's nothing like you, sweetheart. And your mother's helping some fat woman with the corn. Well, they're cleaning the corn, husking what, the corn. What fat woman? How do I know what fat woman? I don't know every goddamn fat woman in the world. Well, it's, it's just wants to be you invited her. He's too fat. I don't like him fat. I like him the way you are, honey. Now what you're gonna do is this. You're gonna come out that door, you're gonna sit up front with me, and Ellie's gonna sit in the back. The hell with Ellie, right? St. Ellis date, you're my date. I'm your lover, honey. Oh, you're crazy. Yeah, I'm your lover. 
you don't know what that is, but you will. I know that too. I know all about you. But, but, but look, it's oh, it's real nice. You couldn't ask for nobody better than me or more for life. I always keep my word. I'll, I'll tell you how it is. I, I'm always nice at first. Uh, the first time. I'll hold you so tight, you won't think you have to try to get away or pretend anything, because well, you'll know you can't. And I'll come inside of you, where it's all you secret, and you'll give you in to me, and you'll love me. You're Honey, you still listening? Get the hell out of here! Oh, be nice, honey, listen. Honey, listen, here's how it is. I always tell the truth, and I promise you this. I ain't coming in that house after you. You better not. I'll call the police if you don't. If you don't. Honey, I, I'm not coming in there, but you are coming out here. You know why? I'm gonna, I'm gonna call the police. I'm gonna call the police. As soon as you touch the phone, I don't need to keep my promise and come inside. You won't want the hat. Why lock it? Huh? Why lock it? It's just a screen door. It's just nothing. I mean, anybody can break through a screen door and glass and wood and iron. <laughs> anything else if he needs to. Anybody at all. And especially on a friend. If the place got lit up with a fire, honey, you'd come running out into my arms. Right into my <laughs> arms and safe at home. Like you knew I was your lover and stopped fooling around. I don't mind a nice shy girl, but I don't like her fooling around. What do you want? I want you. What? I seen you that night and I thought, that's the one, yes sir. I never needed to look anymore. He's coming. Get no. me. I had to wash my hair. Your daddy hair. ain't coming. Your daddy ain't coming. And yes, you, you had to wash your hair and you washed it for me. It's nice and shining and all for me. Here's how it is, honey. You come out, we'll drive away, have a nice ride. But if you don't come out, well, we're gonna wait till your people come home and then they're all gonna get it. Hey, hey, hey. You want me to pull that telephone out? I told you to shut up, Ellie! You're deaf, get a hearing aid, right? Fix yourself up, this little girl's no trouble. She's gonna be nice to me. Don't mind him, honey. He's just a creep. He's a dope, right? I'm the boy for you. And like I said, you come out here nice like a lady, you give me a hand, and nobody else gets hurt. I mean, your nice old bald-headed daddy, and your mummy, and, and, and your sister in her high heel. Because listen, why bring them in this? Now, now you be a good girl, okay? What are you going to do? Just two things. Maybe, maybe three. But I promise it won't last long. And you'll like me the way you get to like people you're close to. You will. It's all over for you here, so... Come on out. You don't want your people to get in trouble, do you? Honey. <laughs> Connie, listen to me. Connie, put the phone back. Put the phone down. Hey, Connie, look at me. Look at me. Listen to me. Put the phone back. Drop it. Sweetheart, if I come in here, it's all over for you. It's all over, okay? Who, who, who are you gonna call, huh? You're not gonna be able to get anybody out here before I get in there? Connie, put the phone down. Put it down. Hey, hey. 
sweetheart. Gotta put the phone down. You don't want to do that. Hey, sweetheart. Sweetheart, come on. Come on. Don't make me break my promise to you. Just put it down. Put it down. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. Put the phone back. That's a good girl. Now you come outside. You must leave now. Take what you need. You think will The place where you came from ain't there anymore. And where you had in mind to go is canceled out. This place you are now, inside your daddy's house, there's nothing but a cardboard box I can knock down any time. You know that, you always do know it. You hear me? We'll go out to a nice field, out in the country where it smells so nice and it's sunny, and I'll have my arms tied around you. So you will need to try to get away and I'll show you what love is like, what it does. Be nice to me, be sweet like you can because what, what else is there for a girl like you but to be nice, sweet and pretty and just give in. Get away before people come back. And, you don't want them to get hurt. Now get up, honey. Get up all by yourself. That's right. Now, now come on out to me, honey. Let's see a smile, huh? Try it. You're a brave, sweet little girl. And now they're, they're eating corn and hot dogs cooked to bursting over an outdoor fire. And they don't know one thing about you. Never did. And honey, you're better than them. Because not one of them would have done this for you.